Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and not so long ago, we've talked about various galactic discoveries coming from the iconic James Webb Space Telescope. Discoveries made by this beautiful telescope in just a few months, in early to mid-2023. But naturally, as soon as I finished editing the video, yet another discovery was made of yet another somewhat exciting, unusual galaxy. Although, I guess calling it unusual maybe is not fair. Very usual, typical galaxy. As typical as it gets. And so in this particular video, I wanted to focus on this galaxy, currently referred to as JD1, that in some sense is maybe even a much more important discovery than any of the other galaxies previously seen by the James Webb. Despite being super average, not really anything special, and more importantly, even being barely visible. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail. But first, exactly how was this found and where is it located? Well, this barely visible galaxy is inside of this very beautiful cluster you see right here. This is known as the Pandora Cluster, and it's a really intriguing object because it seems to be a pile-up of four smaller galactic clusters that must have collided 350 million years ago. And as a result of this collision, we get to observe a lot of gravitational interactions along with various emissions, including various X-rays visible in red in this image. And though most of the galaxies that are visible seem to represent only 5% of mass, it's really the interaction of things like dark matter and a lot of really hot gas that produces most of the gravitational effects. And because of these somewhat unusual observations and somewhat unusual effects that are produced inside of this cluster, the scientists now refer to it as the Pandora's Cluster. The cluster that unleashed a lot of different effects as a result of a collision. But then, back in 2014, when the Hubble telescope was looking at this cluster, it accidentally discovered an unusual patch that you see right here. A patch that resembled something really far away, but nobody really could tell exactly what this was. The scientists assumed this to be a galaxy, with a relatively high redshift, but it was impossible until now to precisely determine what exactly it was. In other words, this was discovered almost 10 years ago, but there was just not enough data available to do any kind of analysis. And that's of course, until now, until new observations with the James Webb Space Telescope. The telescope whose main job is to analyze galaxies like this one. And so by observing this once again in infrared light, and by looking at this gravitationally lensed image from two different perspectives, the scientists were able to definitively confirm the existence of this very faint galaxy. A galaxy that was very likely in existence when the universe was only about 480 million years old, and most importantly, represents the faintest galaxy discovered so far. It's barely visible at all. And the only reason we're even able to see it is because of that Pandora galactic cluster that amplified its luminosity by approximately 13 times. But because this is James Webb, it was now able to see things in different frequencies, creating spectroscopy for this galaxy, which of course means that we can determine the exact distance, placing it right at the beginning of reionization period. The period that the scientists believe is responsible for basically making the universe somewhat opaque to quite a lot of different light coming from the stars. But since this particular galaxy doesn't seem to be particularly exciting in any other way other than being somewhat dim, why are we even talking about this? Well, it's that reionization period, which by the way is one of the main mysteries the James Webb is trying to solve, that could potentially be explained by this discovery. So here's what I mean by this. This galaxy has a very low stellar mass. It also has relatively low metallicity and is about 5% as bright as a typical modern galaxy. It's also really small at possibly about 500 light years in size. This image also shows us that it contains at least three separate star clusters where quite a lot of activity is being generated through the production of new stars. And normally, this galaxy would be completely invisible to us, except that it found itself in just the right orientation and passed in just the right way in front of us in order to be magnified just enough for the light to be visible by the James Webb. If it wasn't for the gravitational lens, it would also be invisible to us even now, even to the James Webb Space Telescope. So this discovery was basically completely accidental. But the scientists behind this paper, and actually a lot of scientists studying James Webb images and a lot of other images, currently very strongly believe that this represents most of the galaxies that must have existed during this period of time, and more importantly, must have been responsible for reionizing the entire universe. Or essentially changing the universe from being somewhat opaque, where the hydrogen gas doesn't allow a lot of powerful light to go through, to changing hydrogen into ionized hydrogen, suddenly making the universe transparent to all of the light. And it was the presence of this hydrogen previously 
that sort of prevents us from seeing quite a lot of things in the early universe. Or just to rephrase this, this somewhat modest looking galaxy is most likely the typical representative of most galaxies that used to exist back in the days. Whereas a lot of these other galaxies we've discussed previously, the ones discovered by James Webb previously, and the ones that generated a lot of buzz, are actually the exception to the rule. These particular galaxies are very likely much brighter, much more massive, and also much more rare compared to what we expect to find in that particular period of time. Making these exceptions to the rule, and this a typical representative of the reionization period. These galaxies were most likely all over the place, they were also reionizing hydrogen across the entire universe, but because of that neutral hydrogen and because of their overall dimness, they're practically impossible to discover unless they're in just the right position in front of a very powerful gravitational lens that can then magnify their brightness. And since one of the major goals of astronomy and specifically the James Webb itself is to actually determine the types of galaxies responsible for reionization, in some sense, this galaxy might have just solved that mystery once and for all. Whereas a lot of these other galaxies we've discussed in the previous video are examples of very bright, very powerful and somewhat rare galaxies that are most likely not the average typical galaxy during this time. In some sense, this would be very similar to like M87 or Massey 87, that's one of the more massive, brighter galaxies in the vicinity of the Milky Way compared to a lot of smaller, less prominent galaxies located in the vicinity. So this is just a really bright, really powerful example that does not represent the norm. Which also means that these galaxies were probably not responsible for most of the reionization that was very likely done by much smaller, much more faint objects. And more importantly, because of the size and the overall luminosity, this also obviously suggests that the vast majority of galaxies 400 to 500 million years after the Big Bang were generally much smaller, contained a lot less stars, and were also relatively low in metallicity as expected by modern theories. With this somewhat serendipitous discovery, basically proving all of this once and for all. With this galaxy also serving as a reminder that there's always that observational bias that we have to deal with when trying to explain a lot of mysteries of, well, really everything in science. And so here, this galaxy possibly proves that most of the galaxies back in the days were exactly as the scientists always expected them to be. Smaller, containing a lot of active regions, like the three regions you see right here, and producing a lot of powerful stars, which then led to all of the gas around those galaxies changing into ionized hydrogen. So definitely a pretty cool discovery and a pretty cool analysis. But obviously just the first step in once and for all figuring out what happened in the early universe a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Which also means that we're going to be coming back and talking more about this in some of the future videos. But if you'd like to learn more about other galactic discoveries, check out that previous video that should be somewhere in the description as well. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.